Hello and welcome back to What the Math. Today's topic is simple quantitative discrete data. This is sub chapter B in chapter 6, and we're basically going to be talking on how to organize and how to analyze your data once you collect it. Uh, so there's quite a lot of different ways of doing this. I'm going to show you some of the easiest ones. And But before we do this, let's just uh, come up with a hypothetical example. This is an example we used in previous video. Basically, imagine we have students that we're try trying to um, interview, and we want to find out on average how many hours do, do they sleep per night. And we're going to come up to random 20 students and just ask them the question, how many hours a night do you sleep? Now I'm going to actually use a random number generator to, to do this problem because I can't really go and ask students. I don't have time for that. Uh, so I'm going to select, uh, let's just say I'm going to ask 20 random students. Uh, my minimum value is going to be, let's just say how many students, I mean, five hours, maybe, I don't think anyone sleeps less than five hours. And the maximum is going to be nine hours. Um, and I'm going to generate random numbers. So this will generate random uh, 20 numbers for me and they're right here. So there's nine, five, eight, six, seven, nine, and so forth. And, and uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, collect these numbers and uh, actually organize them in a table. So we're gonna be using words for this just to take a look at this very quickly. And this is something we call frequency table. This is basically one of the easier ways of distributing the data. Uh, so on the, in the left column right here, I have my numbers of hours slept. So I asked students and they all gave me an answer between five and nine. So I'm gonna put all my numbers right here. So five is here, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, these are numbers of hours that they sleep. And right here, I'm going to put frequency or basically how many times uh, each number appears in my data. So for example, if I look at number five, and I just copied the numbers here on the bottom. So if I look at number five, and here's actually our data on the bottom right here. So if I look at number five, it appears once, twice, three, four, five, six times. So I can write six right here. And then let's just do the rest of the numbers really quickly. So six appears. And this is basically the frequency of the numbers as they appear. And this is all randomly generated, so it's, it's kind of a good representation of what it might be like. But here you can already tell that most of the students at our school probably sleep six hours. Now, relative frequency is um, something a little bit different. This is basically, uh, this is where I have to collect all the numbers first. I know there's gonna be 20 of them. And then how many, in terms of percentages or in terms of fractions, how many times does this number appear in comparison to all of the other numbers? So in this case, it's going to be six divided by 20 which can also be written as 0.3. So relative frequency of 0.3, this will be two divided by 20, or 0.1, and 0.15 for the last one. So this is the relative frequency, uh, frequency, relative frequency, and also number of hours slept. So this is what we call a frequency table. Now let's create something a little bit different. Now we're going to create something called, something called a column graph. And this is actually one of the most popular ways of presenting data and something that you'll see a lot in real life as well. So the way this works is that you'll have columns instead of points and on the left side on your Y axis, you're going to have, in our case, it's going to be frequency. So this is just going to be called frequency. In other words, how many times does the number appear uh, in comparison to other numbers? This is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the bottom part is going to be hours slept, hours slept per night. And this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We don't really need more than that. So now we're going to construct our, our columns. If you look at our frequency table, we know that for five hours, we have a frequency of six. So this is actually the highest frequency. So. We're going to build our column for a frequency of five. So let's just make it in green color. Uh, and you have to make sure that it's in the middle of this number. So our column is going to go up like this. Ooh, have to make it straight uh, up to six. And then it's going to go down to here. And this is essentially our first column. Let me just call, uh, construct the rest very really quickly. Now, normally these columns will be a little bit more straight than this. I didn't really use any software. I just used my freehand writing. And, but essentially this is it. So this uh, column graph shows you the frequency of hours of sleep of students in our school. And this is obviously randomly generated. It doesn't actually represent reality. I'm trying to make this a little bit more visible, but I think it's making it worse. But essentially you can tell that this is the most frequent 
this is actually the most frequent, so 5 appears a lot more often. So from this graph, you can actually, if you had to write a summary you have to, or write some kind of a conclusion, you could actually write that uh, in our school, uh, 5 appears to be, um, or 5 hours appears to be the most common number of hours slept, most, most common. Whereas uh, students are least likely to sleep 6 hours, and uh, second more popular number is 8, and so that's usually the recommended number of hours. Uh, and you, so you can make a few conclusions using this graph. And if you remember your grade 9 um, algebra, the most common number, the most common representative number is actually called mode. So this is right here, this, called, this is called mode. Uh, mode is something that is, uh, basically in statistics, it's the most, most common number. Whereas the other numbers that you, or the other words you have to remember is, uh, there's also something called mean, and mean is the average. So in this case, to find the average, we have to basically go back to our graph, or actually go back to our table right here, and uh, look at all of these numbers on the bottom, add them all up, and divide them by 20, which is our number of, uh, number of measurements, and this will give us uh, the average or the mean for uh, this particular frequency or for this particular statistic. Then there's something called median, which is something we don't really see here, but we'll see it a, a little bit later. Median is the number right in the middle of distribution. Uh, number in the middle, that's what's called median in the middle. Uh, to find the median, this is what you have to do. You first actually have to rewrite all of your numbers like this, but in order. So starting with the smallest number, this will be 5, Six times, five, 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 six twice, and nine, three times. And so now using this, we have to try to find the median, or basically the middle. So if there's 20 numbers, the middle is going to be right somewhere between, uh, somewhere over here. I think the middle is somewhere right here. So actually, Yes, it's right in the middle of this. So it's between two seven. So in other words, your median here is a seven. Median is a seven. Sometimes you have two different numbers. So this could be six and seven, in which case you have to actually add them up and divide by two to get um, an average of two numbers. So if it's six and seven, the average will be 6.5. But in our case, it's pretty easy. Our median is seven. And finally, the last uh, term that you have to remember from uh, grade nine is range. Range is the difference, difference between the highest and the lowest number, difference between, between lowest and highest. In other words, you're looking for the difference between 9 and 5, which is 9 minus 5 is 4, so our range here would be 4. You can also see the range right here on the bottom, it's between here 9 and 5, so the range is 4. And now, if we were to collect this data for many, 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 many numbers, let's just say if we were to collect this for a thousand numbers, what we would see eventually is that our shape of our graph would actually, it would actually try to, it would be similar to this, it would be kind of similar to over this, um, and not, we wouldn't have such a big uh, piece sticking out here. And this is what we would call normal distribution. So let me just erase this right, uh, and draw it again. So this right here is called normal distribution, also known as bell curve. Uh, and bell curve or normal distribution is a most common shape in statistics. Normal distribution. This is what you're more likely to see when you're talking about population and samples. Basically, right here, this is the most common number. This is average as well. And uh, let's we'll just use IQ as an example because it's usually the most common example. So right here, IQ of 100, this is the average IQ. And IQ of 100 is right in the middle whereas uh, everything here is below 100, everything here is above 100, and then on the, sort of like on the outskirts, you have IQ of about 60, where usually uh, that's where, where you have um, people who are mentally disabled, and then over here you have IQ of 140, and that's where people that are considered to be basically genius. Um, and overall, though, population-wise, this is the actual distribution of IQ in the world. However, normally we see different types of distributions. So this is a normal normal distribution right here. It's also known as symmetrical distribution. But then sometimes you'll also have something called negatively skewed distribution. And negatively skewed distribution means that you don't really have that many people on the positive side. So if this is like you, it means that not many people are genius, not many people are smart. 
a lot of people are on the downward side. So basically, IQ is low. Um, so that's why it's called negatively skewed distribution because it's more negative than more positive. On the other side, we have something called positively skewed distribution. And that's when an example would be uh, where you have a lot more positive, a lot more uh, positive stuff, positive things. So for example, if this was IQ, a lot more people with really, really high IQ, not so many people with low IQ. Uh, so this is called positively skewed distribution. But essentially, these names are just to represent the shape of the statistic that you get once you collect your data. So this, this is basically just referring to the shape of the graph. Shape of the graph. And the last important term we're going to talk about is something called an outlier. Outlier is usually a number that doesn't follow the statistic, that kind of lies outside of, you know, any reasonable value, uh, but it's still there. It's, uh, it's there and it, it exists in this particular statistic. Uh, so these are usually numbers that I kind of ignored, but there's actually a whole study on outliers that shows that these numbers are pretty cool. Uh, sometimes an outlier actually uh, may lead to a completely new theory, something that we've never considered before. So uh, let's just say that this is, if this is actually number of hours uh, people sleep uh, per day and six being the average, or actually on the bottom it says number of peas in the pod, but let's just say this is number of hours that uh, people sleep. And an outlier right here is 13. So someone slept for 13 hours. This could be an interesting study by itself. So why did this person sleep so long? Or uh, why are there is 13 Ps in this particular pod? So this this is an out, outlier. You can you can uh, basically call it um, a strange one, but uh, some people, or especially statisticians, usually call it the interesting one. Anyway, so this is it for a chapter subchapter B, simple quantitative discrete data from chapter six. Thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye bye.